Good afternoon uh, to all of you. On behalf of uh, Tim and Nabad and uh, all of us in Nabad, are we audible? Audible there? Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. good. Good. Yeah. Sure. So, on behalf of uh, uh, Tim and Nabad and all of us in Nabad here, we welcome uh, Sri Siraj Hussain Saab, uh, the former Secretary of Agriculture. Uh, Madam Shweta Saini, I think you are popular in Nabad because of your uh, many research studies you undertaken along with also Mr. Ashok Gulati. Yeah. Uh, Sri Ajay Bir Jakar Sahib uh, and Dr. Pulkit Katri. Yeah. So I think you, you three are the authors, authors of this book. So without uh, taking much away, I would uh, now request our head office uh, CGM dear uh, Dr. Hatsai to uh, formally welcome all of all of you and then also to set the context of uh, this uh, book launch event. Thank you. Respected chairman sir and uh, authors of the book and uh, Dr. Ajay Jakarji and other dignitaries present and our department colleagues and our colleagues here. Um, this is a very important uh, study undertaken uh, under the sponsorship of NAVAR. Uh, on farm loan waivers, as we all know, farm loan waivers have a lot of importance and they are controversial as well as uh, there are different uh, views on that, whether they should be allowed or not. So many debates happen. Uh, so Navard uh, sponsored this study way back in 2016-17 and then uh, uh, as part of the research study series, which Navard has been uh, doing quite for some time. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is actually important. This type of study is important for from policy point of yours. So that way, this uh, really I congratulate the authors for bringing out a very good study on a, a topic like this, uh, where they uh, where they have given a very historical perspective and certain interesting facts also they brought out uh, in this report regarding the history, how the loan waivers happened at what time. Uh, on what type of loans they were waived, all those things. And then, uh, more importantly, instead of looking at farm loan waivers per se, they try to contextualize it from the overall agriculture uh, distress from farming point of view. So, th they gave a framework this, uh, of uh, understanding distress and how this indebtedness leads to it, all this entire gamut of things they try to address. Also, they have taken primary. A sample of 3,000 farmers from three states, uh, Punjab, Maharashtra, and uh, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, and they try to bring out uh, farmers' levels issues also in the four. Uh, apart from this, about the fiscal space uh, with the states and the impact of loan waivers on the fiscal behavior and quality of expenditure of the states. So these are the very uh, macro level issues also they try to address here. And overall, they try to make this study very interesting and in a broader context, they could put it the entire issue of farm loan level. That way, this uh, report, uh, and I don't want to give any uh, findings of it. I leave it to others. I don't want to spoil the uh, interest of the business here. So with this, I will... Uh, <clears throat> The first or uh, Delhi or want to proceed with the other proceeding, and I uh, warmly welcome all of you to this event. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for uh, setting the context. Uh, uh, I think, in addition to the people here, a lot of people must be participating online. Yes. So, a big warm welcome to all of them from uh, Nabad. Uh, uh, I now uh, would request uh, Sri Ajay Veer Jakar, uh, Chairman Bharat Krishak Samaj to uh, give his opening remarks. Uh, very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, Chintana ji, Chintana ji, authors of the report and all those listening in today, a very good afternoon. 
uh, foremost, Bharat Krishik Samaj is very grateful to Nabar for this collaboration and support. And it's even more important is that a farmer's organization is doing research for the government of India, I think. So this is the trend of how farmer organization should be moving forward. It was a controversial topic that many suggested that we should not take up, but I think we should do what needs to be done. And the authors have done a fabulous report, uh, fabulous job in compiling the report. At the onset, I think the policymakers, which is the politicians in Punjab, UP and Maharashtra had very good intentions to help farmers and this is one of the ways they decided that help should be given to them. The report brings out different facets of the report uh, of the farm loan waiver and it will help design policies and uh, programs and improve upon them over time, which is a continuous process. How much ever improvement we do, it's a continuous process. I think so the report very correctly summarizes that indebtedness in Indian agriculture is inevitable under the circumstances that exist and indebtedness is more of a symptom of farmer distress than its immediate cause. The report has two parts of collecting the data and interpretation. Uh, as a farmer's organization, we have always believed that interpreting the, the information can be done in many different ways and that is the most crucial part of any interpretation that there are different ways to interpret the data and the information and as a farmers organization we have our own way of interpreting this report which does not necessarily agree with everything that the authors have said and we are very happy and I think the authors will also validate that there was no influence from the farmers organization on, on trying to influence the results of the report. Uh, I'll just take two more minutes. Uh, normally what happens in India in the context as we've noticed is that we always blame failure of policy not meeting its objectives as implementation failures. But I think it's not an implementation failure that is a problem, it is the design of the policy itself that does not allow the implementation to succeed or reach its collective goals and this farm loan waivers is a classic example of how that has happened. As an organization we believe identification of beneficiaries is the most crucial thing when you look at farm loan waivers. A large section of people whose loans should have been waived as was intended by the policy makers were unable to get benefits from this process and uh, working in the villages with uh, in, in Punjab and other places we realized that using the Gram Sabha to identify the really deprived and distressed uh, who required to be supported would have been the best way to go forward. It is also true that farm loan waivers only give temporary relief from the pain that exists and we need to look at longer term solutions to make farming a viable profession. Lastly, we've seen that when allocations happen uh, for farm loan waivers, it's not new resources are not being generated in the state, but they're being diverted. And as the report collected, uh, correctly says that uh, resources for water resources, public works, health, family welfare all suffer. So, and what as a result, what happens is that tenant farmers, landless people and the really poor, they, they suffer more because they have not benefited in any way, but resources that would have been used for their prosperity have been taken away. So we would say that if you would, uh, if states were to plan a, plan a report like this, they should be looking at raising more resources rather than diverting resources from social welfare, welfare scheme. And uh, lastly, we would say is that uh, Better ideas come up when people are invited to debate and dissent with academic work. This report allows for creation of that space. Rather than the report itself, I think what is more important is what comes after this report. Uh, how states respond to it, how academics respond to it, and how even farmer organizations respond to the report. In the sense, they should be able to realize that when they seek farm loan waiver, they should seek extra resources, they should not seek a diversion to benefit a small section of society. I will leave it at that and leave it at saying that there's a deep moral question here that needs to be answered is how best to improve rural livelihoods and make farming a prosperous profession. And I think, sir, it cannot be done without involving farmer organizations. If the government and the academics and the economists think that they can design policies to benefit rural India without involvement of farmer organizations, we will not be able to reach our objectives, collective objectives. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for this opportunity and thank you for supporting us. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, your opening remarks. Uh, uh, you, I think it is uh, good that you have classified yourself, yeah, where you sort of said that uh, 
uh, you neither influence the report nor uh, uh, you totally agree with the report. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think now I would uh, now request uh, our honorable chairman to kindly release the book. <laughs> We'll <laughs> 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 So, it is on distress actually, you should have smile at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thank you very much, sir, for releasing the uh, book. Uh, I have seen uh, real uh, physical launches of books. I have seen virtual launches of books, but this is the first hybrid launch of a book I have seen. <laughs> so I think uh, there is something unique about the uh, launch of this book. Uh, I would now uh, request uh, uh, Madam Shweta Saini to uh, kindly go through the presentation and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, inform us about the key findings and uh, your experience of the study. Thank you. I will leave yeah. uh, yes. yes. it. We can start the presentation. So, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, we're grateful to Chantala, sir, for uh, getting this day to come. We've been through a lot of ups and downs because of COVID and a lot of other challenges. So, thank you. We really appreciate, sir, you giving us this opportunity. It's a unique project, and, and we are so grateful to the dear team who has been patient with us all throughout the journey of this project. And uh, uh, I ha extend a hearty uh, thanks to the Delhi um, NABAD team for hosting us here. And uh, with this, I can um, welcome everybody listening to this report. And I feel it's such a proud moment. And I feel happy sharing the key results uh, of our study on behalf of my co-authors, Mr. Siraj Hussain and uh, Mr. Pulkit Khatri. I will be using next 15 minutes to go through the key findings. And we can go to the next slide, please. Is so, the presentation visible to all of you? Okay. So uh, I will be spending about 15 minutes going through the project brief, the methodology that we followed and the major findings that we have, and I will end with certain policy recommendations. So very quickly, next slide, please. Uh, the basic premise that we had when we started working on this project was that we wanted to understand how did farm loan waivers as a concept evolve? Uh, who started it, how did it over time come on to become a political tool where, where we saw a lot of political parties uh, declared intent of waivers uh, every time we were closing in on elections. So we wanted to track what the history was. In all of that, what we wanted to really understand, and this is how we uniquely place our study is, we've done a primary survey where we've looked at uh, what the farmers think about farm loan waivers and what their behavioral pattern has been pre and post a farm loan waiver. In addition to that, we also look at the secondary data where we've analyzed what kind of impact that a farm loan waiver in a typical state has had on the financial institutions or the banking industry uh, in that state. In addition to that, what is really fascinating, and as has already been mentioned by Mr. Jhakar too, uh, is the impact that we see on the state government budgets. Farm loan waivers are expensive. How does a state government finance them? Does it have an influence on the expenditures of other departments? These are some of the key things that we will be uh, looking at in this presentation also. Next, please. So as I've already mentioned, we are using a combination of secondary data analysis and a primary survey. We went to three Indian states, very important agriculture states of Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra. 
We started, uh, we had the objective of doing 1000 farmer surveys every state. We started during the COVID lockdown and therefore we had a few ups and downs, but then we could manage to complete this survey of 3000 farmers. In fact, we surveyed about 38 farmers, but the analysis presented is for 3000 farmers. Next please. Uh, see, it is a slide that uh, that I feel brings a lot of novelty to the table is that what we found amongst the bigger things in the Indian history was that when we looked at British mm -hmm. government times, of course, the distress used to be there because of famines and droughts. But even back then, the British administration and even kings before that did not prefer to have any loan waiver. Instead, they always prioritized repayment culture. And instead, whenever there was distress, they looked at a combination of instruments wherein they would look at suspension of payments, they would look at one time grants, they would look at drought uh, loans, but they always preferred payment or repayment of the loans. So, you know, this was one of the big learnings that we present and we've tracked it through history and where we found that the earliest example of what our research showed was that in 1351, uh, Firosha Tughlaq was first mentioned to have uh, uh, waived loans and those loans back then were referred to as Sondhar loans. Eventually in history when we track these Sondhar loans were eventually called as Takavi loans and then we see a lot of instances increasing as we progress to more recent years. And this is one section of the, of the report that we present. And the key learning as I've already said is that we could identify that historically a waiver was not preferred. Instead, they preferred other ways of supporting distressed farmers. So next, please. So what happened in more recent years? In more recent years, we found that since uh, 2012, particularly, there were in 13 Indian states who had implemented farm loan waivers. Some of them, as we've mentioned, even announced more than one farm loan waiver. If we looked at if these announcing governments did come back after political wins, what we found was of the 21 political parties who'd announced about the implementation attempt of farm loan waivers, only four lost elections. Everybody else won the elections. So basically, it was evolving to a point where there was a political buy-in towards farm loan waivers. And uh, next slide, please. So this is critical because we set a context of agriculture credit has been important in India from uh, from the earlier years. Today, the importance of institutional credit is more than 70, more than 70 percent, but still about 28 percent of the loans come from non-institutional sources. Agriculture credit has been expanding in India at a very fast pace. But so has been uh, the credit intensity. So agriculture's credit intensity has been rising. In other words, what we are saying is more credit is being utilized to create the same level of agriculture output. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? The report puts it up as a question. But from this context, we move to the next slide where we look at loans. Now, uh, there is this evolving understanding and uh, this slide becomes important is that farm loan waivers are generally given on crop loans. And what we see are two sides of how, uh, in terms of disbursement, the share of term loans has been rising, which is a good trend. Farmers are investing more. But if we were to look at the outstanding credit and look at the composition there, the share of crop loans has been rising. So crop loans is something where uh, generally the farm loan waivers are announced on. So are we saying that the crop loans outstanding is higher even when disbursement of term loans is higher because there is an expectation of a loan waiver on that. So this is one of the other things that we explore in the study. Next slide, please. Uh, it is critical that we narrow down the discussion to the three integral states that we've studied, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra. Can we go to the next slide? Uh, this slide is a little busy and I pardon that for this, but uh, what we're saying is that we looked at 17's farm loan waiver scheme in all the three states. The bigger thing that we found was one, whenever a farm loan waiver scheme is announced, not everything is given out in the first year, but it's distributed in a phased manner. And that happened in all of these three states. Uh, so what we found was that in case of Punjab, approximately 64 percent, and that was the bulk of the farm loan waiver benefits were distributed in the subsequent year of 1819. In Maharashtra and UP, the year it was declared a close to 74 percent in Maharashtra and 83 percent in UP. Those were the percentage of benefited benefits distributed in that year. The remaining percentage of the benefits were distributed in the subsequent years. 
it is important for us to remember this year because in the next slide when we show you if this had an impact on the budgets of the state it becomes important because whenever you've distributed the most benefits we look at what happened in that year for the uh, the budget of the different departments and we go to the next slide for this so interestingly from here on i will be calling ymd as the year of maximum dispersal that's the year when most of the benefits were distributed and this becomes our focal point when we are understanding if state governments shuffled budget between departments to fund this farm loan waivers at all or not so what we found was that in the ymd year or the year of maximum disbursal in case of punjab budgetary expenditure fiscal deficit revenue expenditure everything rose in case of maharashtra the fiscal deficit in fact fell in the year when they actually distributed uh, uh, distributed the farm loan waiver benefits likewise in up now this was intriguing because we would expect that in a year when they are disbursing farm loan waiver benefits the fiscal deficit should ideally go up it didn't go up and that pushed us to the next slide wherein we looked at if there were departmental shifts between the uh, shifts between the departments we are not necessarily saying that the shifts happen to finance the farm loan waivers but this is the shift we observed in the year of ymd and what we found was and i can go to the next slide as a summary next slide please what we found was that in case of punjab expenditure for the power department for water resources department for public works department for agriculture research and education went down in the year of ymd in case of maharashtra the budget of housing environment home and planning went down amongst other departments in the year when ymd was declared and then uh, was distributed in case of up this was for education public works agriculture research and education the key inside was that these are the departments which are looking at a more capital expenditure more investment into the state government and we see that in the year when the most benefits under farm loan waivers were distributed funds or the departments or these departments suffered a reduced budget so this helped us to conclude that the quality of expenditure in the year of ymd was lower than it would have been if uh, than it would have been in other years and so we make a comparison there so the key take home as i basically said is that generally flw benefits are not distributed in the year they are declared but in a phase manner fiscal deficit fell in maharashtra and up but it increased in punjab only major reallocation as i've said and the uh, reduction in capital expenditure is what we've showcased through that budget analysis and that's the key take home here next part of the presentation we are saying and this is one of the uh, bigger learnings we started with and when we read literature was that every time there is a farm loan waiver there is a disincentive for the financial institutions to lend further so this is only checking that and the way we are checking it is we are looking at three variables there how much did the banks target to disburse how much did they really disburse and what kind of performance ratio did that make so what we are saying is in the three diagrams that that represents the three states is the dotted bars are the years when the ymd happened when most of the farm loan waivers were distributed we see that the blue line falls in those dot in that year with the dots that basically is saying that the performance and performance is nothing but how much of disbursement was from the target it was so what percentage of the target was actually dispersed and what we could show was in all the three states the disbursement fell in the year of ymd the targets did not but the actual performance or disbursal of credits by the banks was lower in the years when most farm loan waivers were distributed next and uh, this is where we come to the big important uh, uh, second chunk of our report is is the findings that we get from the 3000 farmers that we surveyed in the three states and this is the composition of the districts we've covered and of course we had to maneuver a lot because of the lockdown restrictions but then we did manage to cover a lot of distress areas traditional distress areas in the three states next please 
So this is a typical profile of the survey respondent that we had. Overall, we covered most of the farmers were the small and the marginal farmers in the, in the three states. 51% respondents were in the age of 35-55. Average household estimates was developed. We also found out the land and what kind of land profile they had. And we found that Punjab had the, and we're not surprised, but Punjab has about 50% respondents who had leased in land. Of course, this is setting the context. Let me just show you the key results. Next, please. So what we found amongst them was, and this is only one of the elements, so we sequentially moved for a typical farmer. First, we wanted to understand where did he borrow from. Second, we wanted to understand what kind of his default pattern, if at all that has happened, has happened. And in the third part, we would ask them, why is it that you default? What happened? What kind of distress causing factors there are? So the first question was, from where did they borrow? In the three states, our survey respondents uh, revealed that in Punjab, we had about, and institutional loans, we are not surprised are the most important source of, of borrowing for farmers in all the three states. What is interesting is that Punjab, uh, uh, we had approximately 31% of people who borrowed from both institutional and non-institutional sources. It is uh, uh, heartening to see that uh, uh, from non-institutional sources, the percentages are much lower and they have been reducing over time. Next, please. Now, this is a little technical side, but let me just put it up. And I know Mr. Jhakar is here, so he might have views. And that's how we sometimes do have our own debates. What we found was overall Punjab farmer borrowed more for the same piece of land at a rate of interest much higher than in the other two states and also had a higher rate of outstanding loan. So uh, this is what we found. So if you were to look at the left hand side of the diagram, that is basically showing and it's just an X axis, which is different from Punjab, because for Punjab, it goes up to seven, while for Maharashtra and UP, the it just goes up to 2.5. So what we're just showing is Punjab farmer is borrowing a larger amount and it is borrowing at a much higher rate on the institutional loans also. And as, as life has it, they have a greater outstanding amount also. I will have draw up my learnings in the eventual slides, but we can move on. See, so uh, one of the things that we thought that we might bring it up here was that even though under KCC, there is a provision of 10% of diversion and you can use it for other purposes. But what we found in case of uh, these farmers were for KCC loans, in Punjab, the red portion is the extent of diversion. That is where the funds were not being used for the purpose they were taken for. So approximately 45% went away. And in case of uh, uh, UP, of course, it was the lowest. And uh, of course, they had the least access to banking sector also. So that's another uh, aspect that we would have highlighted. But overall, at the level, this is how they are looking. So next slide is the key take homes. And this is where I will spend a little more time. Uh, what we found was that, uh, and this is what happened. So we look, we asked a farmer, where did you borrow? We asked him kind of outstanding he had and from which source did he have more outstanding? It was interesting to find that in all three states, farmers preferred to pay back non-institutional first and institutional later. So generally the tendency of outstanding being in institution was greater in all the three states. So this is the first take home that we found. Second we found was that uh, the rates at which these farmers borrowed in terms of non-institutional, the rate went up to 21%. We're not surprised. These are per annum rates. But in case of institutional loans and provided we did look at a lot of SMF, still the rate of borrowing for them, effective rate of borrowing for them was from 59 to 7.7%. Another thing that we found was very critical for our report was that, and this was the premise we started with, that every time the government announces a farm loan waiver, their presumption is that farmers' biggest distress point is indebtedness. So if he's most distressed by indebtedness, let's just give him a waiver so his distress will go off. What we found was that farmers did not rank indebtedness as very high on their distress causing factors. Instead, what caused them more distress was income instability, production instability. So they were more concerned about cattle ruining or the stray cattle ruining their, their crop than they were about default. So, and I will show you eventually how these farmers prioritized. They were wanting to pay back. It is just that their incomes were unstable and the social and the family situations were such that this happened, but I will come to that. Next, please. 
Another thing as we found was, and this is particularly for the small and marginal farmers was that if their irrigated land was higher, the level of distress was lower. This is something we know that, but then we found out too. Another interesting thing we found was that if the household size was bigger, farmer had more hands to work on, he, he appeared to be lower distressed. Third thing was that if they had greater proportion of their loans coming from non-institutional sources, which were expensive, their distress level was higher. We know that it's just we, we, we did find that uh, echo from the survey results. Next, please. Now, uh, uh, this is where uh, we come to uh, other bigger learnings is that, you know, and this is what amazes us and we're happy to present it. But then of the beneficiaries, FLW beneficiaries we talked with, not many reported having problems taking fresh credit the next year. And it was amazing. It's just farmers did not say that we could not access credit the subsequent year of after being a beneficiary the last year. We didn't expect it, but that's something that came out. Uh, there were, uh, so we had asked farmers for the level of distress, found out that approximately 40% of all beneficiary of FLW and non-beneficiary, but 40% of these respondents who were very highly distressed were not benefits or beneficiary of FLW. So that basically showed that we could not target and deliver to the rightly distressed person but rather it was a more more uh, widespread dissemination and therefore we might have uh, we missed about 40 percent of the highly distressed not being able to get the benefits another thing we found was that most farmers felt that access to non-institutional credit was critical they did not want it to be substituted and they thought that the ease of getting the credit and the human character to the non-institutional uh, uh, borrowing was important for them. Uh, then we also found that, and this is by the way, what the farmers have said is that with farm loan waivers, there is a higher chance of willful defaults by farmers. Farmers are telling us this, that whenever farm loan waivers are given, there is a chance that willful default by farmers would increase. And we have about 68 to 80 percent of the respondents agree to that. And then, of course, as I've already mentioned, more than indebtedness, it is the income and the production linked volatility and the vulnerability that they face that is a bigger distress causing factor than indebtedness itself. And then, of course, we said that uh, more than 90 percent felt FLW only benefited a small group of actually distress. We can go to the next slide, please. This is something which which we think that we learned as a bigger learning for us as academics and as uh, economists was the framework of how we look at farmer distress. So today, when we look at farmer distress, we have income volatility, production volatility, his family crisis and other things which cause distress to him. And one of the distress forcing factors, the indebtedness level. Now, what we found was if we can go to the next slide was that in the first round of distress, in the first round of distress, indebtedness is more a cause of the distress that he's faced because of the other factors. So indebtedness for us comes outside of that original frame in the first round. Of course, in the subsequent times when there is indebtedness and he is in the trap of indebtedness, that becomes the cause of distress also. But in the first round, indebtedness is not something that caused him distress. What caused him distress was that he couldn't earn enough. He couldn't, uh, he, he, his production and the yield losses were high. He wanted more control on that. Because of all these factors, he was forced to default. Because he was forced to default and then because these factors continued that the cycle started. So therefore, what we are proposing as a new framework of looking at farmer distress is that we look at indebtedness as outside as more like a symptom of what the inherent problems faced by the farmers are. And therefore we're saying that by a farm loan waiver, you're only catering to a symptom. You're not looking at the most structural issues or the problems that the farmer faces otherwise. And so uh, this is the second, uh, that's the first bigger conclusion that we could draw. Next slide, please. Now, uh, the other conclusion that we, uh, we drew was that, as I've already mentioned, that whenever farm loan waivers are announced in the year when the maximum dispersal happened, concurrently that year, the, uh, the quality of expenditure of that state government went down. We've shown how we've given the departments where it went down. We've also shown that in the year of uh, maximum dispersal, lending by the institutions has gone down. Then what we've shown is via the farmer survey results that the credit discipline and the honesty to revert, honesty to pay back also suffers. The credit culture also suffers because of farm loan waivers in the year. So what we're saying is that originally uh, FLWs were designed to be a bandaid solution 
hold the line till a more long run sustainable solution to farmer distress was designed now we see it that farm loan waivers are looked upon as the solution to its distress so therefore it was always supposed to be a bandaid solution and we need to come back to a point where we are able to probably have a more sustainable longer run solution to the farmers distress and that's what it is and again i've been very quick in presenting but then it is all detailed in the book and next slide please so we're using this to uh, to make a lot of recommendation and i will also request sirat sir to probably take up from here but i will um, talk about the uh, first point here and this is what the farmers have told us because whenever we read literature we realized that there is a growing uh, uh, awareness that non institutional credit is bad and let's just shrink it and replace it with institutional credit and that farmers say shouldn't happen we need access to non institutional sources but let's find a mechanism of regulating the interest rates they have they charge and therefore there was a mention of money lenders act and other acts by the state governments but not many farmers knew about it and therefore they suffered higher interest rate but clearly our objective at least what we deduce from our research is that let's not look at replacing non institutional sources but yes the scope and coverage of institution has to go up and there is no doubt about it because the farmers did have lower distress associated with access to institutional loans second thing that as i've already explained is that we need to look at more structural uh solutions to the problems because farm loan waivers as it appears does not seem to offer anything positive except for the small term relief to a farmer who in just medium to long term comes back to the same situation of requiring another round of waiver so we will have to find ways to probably target the real distressed and not have a more widespread distribution of 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 uh, farm loan waivers and flws are expensive schemes therefore we need to find a mechanism to be able to target if not at the farmer level at least at the district level of where the distress is going and uh, i can always have sirat sir take over from the office thank you shweta thank you uh, mr chairman and uh, mr satyasai in mumbai for sponsoring this report there are several learnings um, during the course of the study which enriched the team and we found that uh, in the three states we studied somewhat different practices were followed administratively so for example sir in maharashtra the state government obtained written concurrence from the banks that they agree to a loan waiver scheme this was not so in other states and we found that in maharashtra the state government was very meticulous in obtaining a written undertaking from the bank that they agree to waive the farm loans because in some cases a part of the burden was also borne by the bank major part of the farm loan waiver was taken by the state government but a little part in some cases was borne by the state government for various administrative reasons also we find and here my experience in the government is important that for the officers who are in charge of the farm loan waiver schemes in the states whether it is secretary cooperation or secretary agriculture they really work very hard in formulating the scheme and from time to time fine tune the scheme so we find even though the second round of farm loan waiver in maharashtra which was announced by the shiv sena government after the re-election the new government the farm loan waiver was implemented in a different manner as compared to the previous scheme by the previous bjp shiv sena government there are a lot of differences there and they used the learning from the first round to fine tune the scheme in the second round of farm loan waiver of course the second round we have not studied but i think there is a need to document all these things for future guidance by the other states i must mention one important thing which mr jakar has uh, not mentioned that when we discuss farm loan waivers with the farmers organizations mm -hmm. sir one thing which mm -hmm. they now point out increasingly due to the uh, coverage in the media is the loan give, is the waiver and right off of loans to corporates so the they, the farmers organizations are now especially after the farmers agitation you know they are studying these issues in more detail and they are interacting with media much more than earlier because of this long agitation they are more exposed to media and therefore they are also improving their performance so they keep saying that you waive 
the banks waived you know so many lakh crores in case of corporates in such a short period of time so much of loans were waived on the recommendation of nclt for various cor- corporates they also say and they know it very well mr jakhar did not mention but he knows it more than i know that in some cases you know the corporate the management was changed and again same company after change of hands was able to mobilize huge loans from the banks and the valuation went up so i think this challenge will also be faced by chairman nabar in whenever a future round of uh, loan waivers is announced by any state uh, also i must point out that in this digital age a lot of data is collected by the government and banks but unfortunately that data is not released in public domain i will give you two examples sir both are relevant to you as chairman nabar one is not related to the report of farm loan waiver but i keep studying this what is the extent of pledged loans in india so some people say it is 50000 crores some people say it is 40000 crores we have tried to look at the reserve bank of india reports we did not find a mention i have tried at personal level also with officers of nabard and rbi have not succeeded my suggestion to both nabard reserve bank of india and the government is that with more data the policy making itself will improve therefore sir please help us and we request you to go to the government and rbi to release more data for example on pledge loans release of data about what crops are getting pledge loans is it only the commercial crops which states are getting these pledge loans is there any uh, relationship to the agricultural development in the state is does it have any relationship with the development of warehousing in that state we do not have an answer so this can also be subject of another study also sir we find that in case of farm loan waivers even in case of farm loan waivers the banks the nabard and the rbi do not release the data for crop wise loans waived for example in up i keep giving this example that the gov- that the state government announces loan waiver for all farmers including the sugarcane farmers you know whose crops are not damaged by cattle uh, they do not depend too much on labor the crop is quite sturdy most of it is in irrigated area and even if they have received uh, the payment of frp and sap with some delay but they do, do receive the payment now compare it with the farmers growing rain fed crops in bundelkhand chairman nabard has spent one full week in this heat last month Uh, in bundelkhand so he knows it very well that they are totally dependent on rains the area is not irrigated they also get the same benefit of loan waiver they also get the same amount of pm kisan so i keep uh, requesting mr jafar that somebody should give a suggestion to the government that a pm kisan should not be extended even pm kisan should not be extended to those who get the benefit of msp or whose lands are irrigated or who are enjoying free electricity and so on of course i know as a government officer these things are difficult but then it is the job of researchers to place these points before policy makers so that sometime in future uh, some political party some political dispensation will pick up these points i must end by referring to a recent speech made by dr ramesh chan and mr nk singh in the Uh, i think it was uh, golden jubilee function of delhi school of economics in which both of them said and then mr nk singh has also written an article that there is so much of dependence on freebies in agriculture that not only in agriculture but also increasingly in other sectors so much of freebies are being announced that perhaps the state government will fall into debt trap the example of sri lanka is before us and then they will not find resources for investment so that is something for the longer term thank you mr chairman thank you mr satyasai and thank you mr jakhar for uh, facilitating this study and i must thank my co-authors the lead co-author shweta saini who uh, supervised the report during pandemic and pulkit khatri who went to field even at the height of the pandemic uh, as soon as the lockdown was relaxed and we took help of others in conducting the 
primary survey. So thank you everyone, and we do look forward to working with Nabad uh, in future also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think, uh, thank you, I think, uh, both of you for the very passionate uh, uh, presentation into your uh, findings and, yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. So, uh, sir, uh, when uh, Raghuram Rajivji was uh, governor for the RBI, he uh, invited us for a conversation and thereafter we had a joint meeting of agriculture credit with him. And in that meeting, he sat with us for two and a half hours and we took around 10 presenters to talk on, on agriculture credit. And we took uh, from our primary agriculture society ke secretary, se leke, we took uh, to uh, finance companies, exporters, Sabji Mandi, the RTA association, president. we took the whole, the whole stream with us. And one of the suggestions that came out of that meeting was that we should have a forensic audit of banks which they define as Farm credit. So a lot of farm credit that is coming in, and he has at times said that banks are in a very bad state. Please don't bring up this topic for the next few years. So I think uh, now it is time for uh, us to think that because a forensic audit cannot be ordered on them because they have to ask for it. So this is one of the things that we keep getting blamed. Farmers keep getting blamed that farm credit is going up, it's cycled off to other things. I think an audit is required of where the farm credit is being given and for what purpose because I think a lot of it is being categorized as farm credit and it is not actually credit to farmers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity and for the support to be here. Thank you so much. So, uh, thank you very much. I would now uh, request uh, uh, our chairman, sir, uh, Dr. Chintala, to give his keynote address. Okay, I think it must be. Are you able to see it? This is not working. Hello. Okay. Hello, good evening to all, and uh, it's a very energizing kind of a discussion, really, that had. Uh, followed after the launch of this good book that has come to a long time. Uh, first of all, I must be thankful to uh, Siraj Bhusenji, Shweta Sainiji and Kulkit for putting so much of an effort into going into the details of this kind of a very controversial subject. And uh, I should really congratulate uh, even Arthi Krishak Samaj, uh, Ajay Jakarji, and also our my immediate predecessor, Harsh Banwalaji, for identifying this as a key area to get studied. And I must be thankful to our Department of Economic Analysis and Research for hand-holding the entire thing and uh, giving a kind of a due direction as to really how the things have to be there. Now, uh, Okay, now regarding this entire uh, report, actually already so much of a review everybody has spoken. So now I'll just speak a little out of this book and with a kind of the same kind of a context. Now, uh, in the last 35 years, actually now I am there in the bank and uh, so now I'm a witness to the a series of farm waivers. When I was student of agriculture, uh, so we used to read that Britishers have made the Takavi. So actually, we don't know really what the Takavi was not a common word in any of the language. It's a Hutu word. And today, actually, I have found in this one, Takavi was to keep the people in the same good state. I think, you know, the government has given a kind of a support kind of a system. So, and I was not, uh, maybe I don't know whether I was alive or not. I was not there during the Muhammad bin Tughlaq's time when the uh, first time he has announced this kind of a form waiver. But, if I really look into it, actually, every time actually you read about the Muhammad bin Tughlaq, people say that actually he got a, such kind of a foresight, which is just little, uh, maybe it's sometimes ahead of the things which is supposed to happen. Probably now, otherwise, actually this kind of a distress probably might have been there earlier also. And also that I was very, uh, maybe it was... Uh, may be very enriching to learn that even during, I'm not saying the Vedic times, at least ever since that things have been recorded, like Kautilya times and others. The interest being charged was maybe 15%, 24%, 240%. Now I really wonder that time when the money circulation was so good, 
and somebody paying 240 percent means i don't know really what exact kind of a profit they used to extract in case if they were making the money now these are all some things first first thing is somebody had tracked all these things so now it was very nice though actually there was some mention somewhere i was reading even during the ramayana times actually there was a farm credit and bhagwan ram had ordered that they should charge a very nominal rate of interest we don't know how far that is true but thing is probably it is all anecdotal now the next part is that uh, uh, when i joined the bank actually uh, after four years first time this farm waiver has come right when devilal ji was the dpm and they announced and everybody was wonderstruck because i think it's like the present day pandemic i think all the people living that time had never seen what was a kind of a waiver and first time the waiver has come and nabad was interested with this task of supervising the whole thing i still remember that as a very junior level officers we used to generate all the list of the people who are going to get the benefit and used to supply it to the each and every branch of the bank and also the dcc this and everything so the thing is to have a kind of a deduplication exercise kind of a thing was done in a manual fashion actually all the lists were pasted on the boards of the bank and the people uh, whether it is gram sabha or not people used to come and see whether i figure in it or not and such kind of a thing so now that time i think the whole uh, amount uh, written off was close to around 10000 crores and being a central government kind of a sponsored thing i think not much of an effort had gone as to really how it has impacted the finances of the government and anyhow that actually there was no correlation but thing is after the waiver india has gone to a very bad state and they had to pledge the gold loan also so now i don't know whether it was a a kind of a collateral damage that had happened because of this 10000 15000 crores taken off from the coffers but things just can't make it a kind of a thing unless the researchers again going to this really how the things are and the second loan waiver in 2008 actually when it was there already we were sufficiently mature to see really how the things were there and that time actually they announced that the computation part was given to nabad as to really how much will be the loan and actually we completed that it will be around 72000 crores based on the kind of outstanding and all those things and so now out of the 72000 crores close to around 60 or 65000 crores what is bus and uh, again at the same kind of a thing nobody had gone into the entire scenario whether it had impacted the coffers but again very surprising like so sometimes actually the one event follows the other the moment that particular farm waiver was given money was disbursed the great depression in the century had happened in 2008 9 and uh, actually this was washed off under the carpet actually that nobody had really seen really whether the government finance have taken a beating or not but thing is the whole of the world is under distress and this also has gone into this but subsequent waivers actually now actually the way you have studied they are all the state that is individual state sponsored kind of a form of waivers and it has become a kind of a uh, a tool for as a political experience everybody tries to do people in opposition will say that not only way but we will give even something more freebies because you know they are not going to come to power in case if they come to power we don't know really how they are going to honor it but those in the power actually had announced that they will do the waiver of all the things and really they bled through the nose and some people have done some people have done it but thing is some of the governments they came to power that time but thing is they lost in the next kind of elections we don't know whether they were unable to fulfill the that kind of a promise which we cannot say but uh, a thing was there and it it had put a stress now only one thing is actually that when uh, shweta madam was telling that uh, after this actually there was no beating on the bank finance actually some in this conclusion some i just uh, is agree because uh, now as uh, nabad actually we look into the whole of the data whenever there was a kind of a farm loan waiver next year that particular state has got a very low level of a credit penetration because now why because many of my classmates were there in the commercial banks and they used to tell the moment somebody asks for this credit waiver the loan waiver the banker feels that actually this fellow is an intentional kind of a defaulter or willful defaulter so now let us not do it and then give a cooling period so that's why this thing now actually that i had seen in maharashtra there actually substantial amounts used to flow from the cooperative system and also others and nabad used to give so much of money to them actually the last 2 3 years actually it was very low kind of a thing so i feel that kind of a collateral damage 
always happens. So now that is over. And also, and one other thing actually, you say that that um, some 28 percent or 30 percent of the distressed, most distressed farmers did not get the benefit. And actually, here I think if you had to go to a, some more research, because why uh, I know because how it was this. This is a very common. Actually, there are so many court cases actually which we used to fight. Actually, now they say that somebody said that. Everybody in my neighborhood has got the waiver, but things I didn't get. Why? Because this fellow was already a defaulter before the waiver was announced. And you just see any of the waiving document, they say that actually those performing loans of that time will be waived. And those who are already the defaulters, actually, they will never be covered under this. So now, in that way, actually, now this 40% or 30% of the people who were already excluded from the banking system and actually bank has not considered. So now it's a kind of a paying a premium over the kind of a price is already paid. So now in that way, actually, that's a double whammy for such kind of a people. And the other one is that, that uniformity. Now, actually, that now we paint the whole thing with the same brush uh, and being a democratic country. Actually now, actually, now, actually, we have to look into the policy implications out of this. Report. Actually, now. One very good thing suggested was you should have to have a distress farmers or index, whatever is there. But how to go about? What is the parameterization for this one? And subsequently, really, how the if this instrument is taken by the people? Suppose now, if I am the beneficiary or I am the loser, actually, I try to contest in any way. Actually. So naturally, my should be included. Now, the second thing is the crops. Actually, that only one good thing actually which I will say that now, in case of this waiver. I think there should be a kind of a discriminatory approach of the government. So actually, they should tell while they're doing it where actually all the freebies were given by way of free irrigation, free power, free kind of a thing, and the crops enjoy the MSP or FRP or anything. Actually, they dominate almost 60% or 70% of the waived part. You just take the case of Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, or for that matter, Karnataka, wherever it is there, sugarcane, rice, wheat where almost 100% certainty of procurement by state is there and actually come what may well is uh, rain fed or maybe the irrigated or maybe the crop is of this kind of a thing actually they are going to have certain amount now particularly take the case of sugar cane when that frp has been made and also that over a period of time it has become more stringent they said that in case if the mill doesn't pay money within 14 days mill owner can be arrested and which is not there in other crops. Now, actually, some mills were one as were arrested also. And in some places, actually, the mills permissions were threatened to be revoked. So when these things are happening, the mill owners are paying the money. Maybe there may be a little bit of a delay, but otherwise nothing. So that's why. And also, if you really collaborate, maybe collaborate the data that is available, the sugar cane is the most certain crop in the country today. By doing nothing, that lazy crop will deliver 1.5 lakh crop. 5 lakh rupees to the farmer per acre. Just one, he has to sow it, he has to just observe it. And there is nothing to do, no cultural operations, nothing. Irrigation free, sunshine free, and crop growth is free. And only his job is only to just collect the entire benefit out of it. And now, if you look into it, again, one more thing actually, when Saini Ma'am was telling that uh, crop, or maybe Jakarsa was telling that really crop kind of a data was never there. But actually, in 2000, I think uh, 98, 99, actually, after this one, actually, out of curiosity, some kind of an exercise was done by us in Andhra Pradesh. And uh, it was to our dismay we found, even in the places where actually there cannot be a cultivation of banana or sugarcane, most of the crop records say that actually they cultivate banana and sugarcane because they get the maximum credit limit for these crops. When the rice gets 5,000, sugarcane and banana gets 20,000. So now actually to get that kind of like, you know, private bank as the IMBP or maybe the commercial bank. So now, even if we attempt, I don't know really how it is. Now, only actually you know, one solution, because now I have seen in Andhra Pradesh today, they have a kind of a e-crop data. Actually, what they have done is every farmer before sowing has to register on e-crop, which crop he is sowing and to what extent. And the procurement is limited only to that fellow who has registered 
and also the normative yields calculated by the state and the procurement is done only to that extent. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, generally, I have seen whether it is Punjab, Haryana or any other thing, so sugar cane coming from some other Bihar also comes into West, Western Uttar Pradesh because somebody is paying 3,000 rupees. Likewise, the same. Now, the similar kind of thing happens. In, so now, this model of e-crop, which they have done, if it is put across the country, I think uh, we will be having such kind of a thing. And second thing is now, if you have to have a kind of a differentiated kind of a loan waivers, then we should have this kind of a database. And this, I think you can uh, take them and suppose the next study, if you do next, you can study such kind of a system that is there and uh, the distress index can be made on that kind of a thing. So now, if already some states, because they are now in Andhra Pradesh, all maybe 70 lakh hectares is there on the deep crop, and everybody has to register. Otherwise, actually, he will lose that kind of a benefit of procurement. So when these things happen, I think now uh, we will be having, so we are over a period of time, I think, moving towards the ever goal of giving a kind of a discriminatory farm loan waiver rather than a broadband farm loan waiver, and which is the requirement of the thing. Suppose now, actually, that I don't know, Tuglak time may really how he has done, whether it was uh, maybe for the people who are needy or for the everyone. Yes, but thing is actually now, if you're, because while going through the report, I was looking into it, actually it was, and they were not giving the waiver, they were giving the incentivization. Yes. Because that fellow should stand firm in the, on the trees for the one or two years to withstand that kind of a stress and come back to the farm. So now the similar kind of a thing actually now is the requirement. So definitely, uh, we require a lot of policy implications and moreover, though it is politically expedient for the parties to announce, but thing is the same parties are now having all the problems with the finances. Now actually that last two pandemic now, if you see that last two years, it was a kind of a stress the state governments are undergoing. And I don't know that in case, like a one state actually, which we studied Punjab, already it was in the deep throes of the debt. And debt. And uh, at individual level, at the state level, the finance are so stressed. And this government also has announced a kind of a waivers of so many things. Now they will waive this and all. I don't know where from the resources are brought. And if that is the case, ultimately, it is, I think, that transferring the public deposit money to the private coffers uh, without having a much of a benefit. Though actually, as a firm, um, maybe the ecosystem building organization now, but we are partial to the farmer's cars, but thing is, can we really afford this one on a long term? This really we have to look into it. I think the next time when you study, I think you can broad base even on other states. Now, actually, there are so many states are giving freebies. Farm, non-farm and all those things. Now, actually, somebody was asking me really whether the freebies have to be given. I say that now, when somebody is giving a kind of a PLI, prudential incentive, and somebody is being given some kind of a thing, incentives and maybe interest concessions, the why the poor farmer also should not be given. Actually, this is in case if I am partial to the farmers. But thing is, really how? Actually, that now, again, like now I really take, this is the argument which whenever we speak, the way the Jakar Sahib was telling that the moment somebody tries to argue that farmers should not be given, now actually the news is so democratic. Everything happens and everybody quotes only those two fugitives right now living outside the country who had amassed maybe close to around 12 or 14,000 crores. Say that if those people have run away with 14,000 crores, why are these poor farmers maybe having 3,000? Actually, now today, I think sometime back I was reading a newspaper, actually, somebody has gone to the court. This farmer has defaulted only 3,000 rupees. Why actually he has been arrested? And others with the 15,000 plus could not be arrested. Actually, now, actually now this kind of a comparison, because earlier in the good old days when actually there was absolutely no news, actually people used to believe whatever has been told after some time, but today actually news is in a GP and everybody knows about it. So now this waiver is the thing. So now uh, going through, because actually I, last night I was going through the report, it was a very fascinating reading. Actually now I can say after a long time, I read a report fully in a, in a span of around four hours. And it was so fascinating to read because tracking the history and going to kind of a way forward. Actually, now way forward is actually it's purely our own opinion. But at the same time, I think it has to be further probed into this one. Really, maybe making the index 
creating such kind of because today actually that information systems algorithms are ai yeah, and ml is so cheap i think now we should put the whole thing into this kind of a thing and see really which farmer is doing what and uh, here i will quote an example because i we were we finance maybe some of the nbfc is one of the nbfc which is into big way into the truck finance they say that their uh, npa level is hardly anything why because at the time of financing the truck actually they have a kind of a tie up with the uh, company which is supplying the truck they put an rfid chip in the truck so now the moment the driver takes the truck anywhere and trying to do the road work for an hour and all those things it's actually entire log is created in the system somewhere so at the end of the month when the emi comes the drivers cannot say that i have not done any work in the month because already the log book is there so now such similar kind of things can we really create for the whole of the thing because we have post year on 14 million farm holdings and really who is going to create that kind of a thing actually in case if that comes i think no it's very very easy to give this kind of a a kind of a stratified kind of a farm loan waivers and also to some maybe to a great extent to some to some extent somebody in bundel can who lost the crop 100% actually he should be compensated 100% while somebody in the irrigated area who lost only 5% actually he should be given the only the proportionate pro rata kind of a compensation actually then only i think uh, we are going to do this one and then uh, because now i will come to the banking system because with all the things the collateral damage happens to the banks every time the waiver happens the next year the banks will have stress banks uh, will have no actually you are telling no because now uh, one more thing actually the distortion with the kind of the curves which you are given is that the term loans are going up these term loans are nothing but the loans converted and so the term loans may be going up it is not exactly that agricultural the term loan going to the farm machine the crop loan converted for a period of two or three years as a kind of thing is reckoned as the term loan and they put it so now actually that is so now actually the, <laughs> we should take a little bit of a some more research also into this one so now uh, being uh, maybe into this kind of a system actually i find that now the time has come actually the state governments and also the every government actually state or union government which is immediately there should be a kind of a policy prescriptions have to be given to them next time if you are going to the waiver really what is going to the implications because now second thing is if you are just trying to relieve the stress of the distressed farmer by maybe diverting 50000 crores actually for a state 50000 crores is a very huge amount then you are giving stress to the rest of the populace by denying them that common included medical facilities or something so now these things have to be brought to the notice of the policy makers then things will work in a better way that's when actually when i was reading actually i was getting so many ideas actually babra so much of a work has gone into this one and uh, i think now we should maybe further uh, proliferate this kind of a thing so actually maybe things looking into even uh, that 89 and also 2008 post these uh, waivers really what happened to the finances of the nation and really what were the implications of that and that time really how the banks have faced the trouble the records are always available so now if that is the case actually then we will give the entire in the living memory the waivers yeah. two are the mother of all waivers and the three are the chota chota waivers so now remaining 17 so now if that is the case those two mother waivers also if you look into it then we say actually now somebody had set the ball rolling in 1989 now it has become a kind of a thing as well. now the other thing is actually now being in this bank actually we know now suddenly take the case of sgs sgs generally have got near 100% recovery and that is how we take it as otherwise at least 95% is the normal recovery. but we have seen in few states where the farm loan waiver was announced in a particular year the npa level of sgs has gone to 25% because they also feel that agar isko diya to humko bhi dena hai and the other argument which they give is that now you are giving to the farm loan waiver to the farmer who is the rightful land owner again no actually there are so many tenant farmers actually the jlgs and the sg members they do quite a lot of a farm loan but thing is actually they are not reckoned as the farmers so in that process actually they say that no actually we are also doing the farming we were also impacted by the same kind of environment and the weather if that is the case why actually we are denied 
Actually, now this issue also I can now to be, uh, stress because while uh, maybe taking to the governments, actually when this report is being taken to the governments, actually we should really look into these things. Actually, we should try bring home these kinds of uh, things to the thing. If you are trying to give a maybe correct a pain point at one level, then probably it may pain at the other point. Actually, now really how the things are because the entire society may get a kind of a vitiated kind of a thing if you are doing. But at the same time, if we have to keep the farming in its right stead, there should be kind of a palliative measures. So if you consider this FLW as a kind of a palliative with a kind of a course correction over a period of time, then things will work. Okay, now we'll say that, okay, now this, this particular year we are going to wave, but thing is you have to pay it over a period of time, maybe put it in 10 years. Actually, so then in that process, uh, probably the people will not have a kind of a great expectation that every time I get the freebies. But otherwise, in case if you say that a blanket, those who are eligible and the performing kind of a people this year, you say, no, actually the distortions. And actually in some, uh, some states, the circular was, those who are defaulters will not get the benefit. But in some case, actually I know that one branch manager was uh, house arrested by the farmers because that particular branch was uh, getting awards for doing the 100% recovery for the past five years. And the loan waiver was announced and that particular branch did not get even a single pay. They say that those who are the regular will not get the <laughs> waiver. So now all the farmers have not only get out, actually they put him under house arrest. After three days he had to be rescued. So now these, <laughs> these are the things which we have to look into it. So now uh, it's a really, uh, maybe I can um, very, very kind of a, uh, maybe I can say the very, very sensitive kind of an issue and to be dealt with a kind of a lot of uh, maybe with kids gloves to do this kind of a thing while the data is interpreted. And at the same time, I think we have to take because you now the recommendations were very good. But thing is how to operationalize the recommendations. Now that the stress index or distress index really now we will try to attempt, I'm not saying that that's going to be thing. Actually, we'll try to look into it. Actually, we'll try to do a beta, actually how this distress index works. And probably we may take help of the researchers also. Now we try to look into the things as to really how this distress index can be made into a kind of thing. Because now we have kind of a credit scoring things. Now this distress index is a kind of a reverse of the credit scoring. Suppose if somebody is having a distress of the level of 100%, 90%, 60%, 40%. And also the category of the things and the land holding he is having, the kind of a crop he is growing, the kind of a state supports that are coming with regard to the MSP, FRP or something. If all those things are deconstructed and ultimately we go into this one, probably we may come into a different kind of a things, really how a very rationalistic Probably at the end, really if you have to relieve the distress, only around 10 or 20 percent of the people may qualify and the rest of the people need not be getting it. I think we have to work on it and uh, let us also take the findings, uh, maybe we will go through again and if this kind of index has to be done, actually we will take your help again, see really how the research can come into this one and it has to be doing. So otherwise, since all the points were uh, already mentioned, actually I don't want to read out what I have prepared for myself, but thing is, at the end I can say that it is very good that and you told that a simplified process for registration of money lenders. Actually, though the acts were there, but they are very mm, not so greatly implemented. And even today, because now what kind of interest they charge? Actually, when you wrote that 240 percent is the interest charged in the county at time. In the present times, actually, when I was doing the consultancy on HGSY phone, there is a place where 7,200 percent interest is being charged for SAG loan. Simply it is 7,200 was mind boggling. In case if I have 1,000 rupees in a year, I am going to make close to around 72,000 rupees just on that. Because only my job is only every day touch you, give the money and collect it back. Now, that kind of a stress is there. But in case of farm, actually now with the kind of a rationalization of interest, at the 4% or maybe whatever is there, quite a lot of a good things are happening. Because now I feel that the uh, percentage are because you made in one of the things how the GBA versus the loan part is going. Actually, it's a very healthy trend. So now we are able to meet up to 40% or 42%. Mm -hmm. 
How I don't say that mm-hmm. actually that entire loan is being uh, going into the agriculture. A divergence happens, and this we observed in Punjab when I was working. Actually, it's a kind of a rotational kind of a lending they have. They take from all three institutions, and everybody has got a different repayment time, so they will go on rotating it. And Punjab, my money is fungible. because most of things do in a different kind of thing but only solace to the bankers even giving such kind of a higher amount is the land value the collateral property value is so high i think even if they give maybe even something more also actually still they have a confidence that the money can come back if not today tomorrow but the same thing will not hold good in registration or maybe a bundel kind of anything so now we have to have a kind of a model there uh, really how to you know maybe deconstruct this kind of an observations and try to make a different kind of thing really punjab borrows more and the factor productivity of credit is very low if that is the case but the same thing may not be good because now in case of bundel kind even if you want to give more actually first of all this fellow do not have eligibility to give credit such kind so this also and the banks also will do the business where the people are able to repay it <laughs> and it's a very common thing if you look into that internal working group report ultimately 65% of the credit goes only to the four or five states because these four or five states have got the institutions these four or five states have got the repayment ethics these four or five states have got that kind of things to take and give it back in some states which are very poor institutions are weak uh, maybe the social and ecosystem is also not so very conducive and so the people also bankers also see that the right all i should put the thing so till now these are things so now farm loan waiver uh, at the end i will say that at least now the normal view is that it should not be done but thing is now this report has come with a kind of a very balanced we never told it should not be done we say that there should be a kind of a rationalization and there should be a kind of a mediation should happen between the players and really they should take a call really how much to give whom to give and to which crop to give and at the end really how it is going to get the benefit to the society at large and also to the farming sector at large so i am extremely happy with this one because now as i told that this report uh, is going to be read by many particularly the researchers because there is hardly any kind of a very credible reports available on the farm it is so far farm loan waivers and this particular report is very good so now i congratulate once again everyone and okay like regarding the non institutional credit actually i don't want because now you cannot discard the non institutional credit because now if you really look into it, really how the non institutional credit has grown after that great depression in 2008 and in between 2008 to 2012 many of the banks have gone into kind of a pc debt. then when they went into the pca actually the banks have got no uh, channels to lend but at the same time the people are hungry for the credit so now this kind of a new institutions which are a para statal or it can be proxy whatever is that is nbfc have come they started being a channeling agents of the credit through this one so that's why you just look into the data between 2012 to 2019 20 nbfcs and mfis are delivering close to around 30 lakh crores again in the whole of this 120 lakh crores of indian credit that means actually they are substantial players if you call them as a non institutional credit or the money lender as a non institutional credit they have their role but only thing is really whether they can not there is a kind of a regulations are coming there is a kind of a thing and there is a competition within the market though they charge much higher than this 4% but at the same time they fill that gap which the institutions are not able to do it so now without discarding their role i think we have to look into it really how they play kind of a complementary role so that is where actually said so now um, um so with these things i really feel that you have addressed quite a lot of questions and but still so many things are left out and i think the next research should really do this kind of a thing so the um, uh, the very highly distressed as i told that you know, they did not get the benefits but i think this has to be probed into as to why they were either they were a 100% repairs that's why they were eliminated or they were 100% bad people who were eliminated one of these things is the reason so that i feel that the further research should be directed to account for gaps in quantitatively measuring farmers distress 
and building evidence based solution to tackle this multifaceted problem of farmer distress in the country i hope that the finding of the study along with the recommendations shared with others would help state governments banks researchers and also other shareholders i appreciate the others for conducting the study and come out with a very balanced review actually now generally all the reports will be either this way or that way like any other kind of a tv reports but it's not actually it's going to be a very big kind of a balanced review and it is insightful so now we wish that the people read it people digest it and the people who are in the policy making whether that the bureaucrats or the anybody who is advising they should really come out with a kind of a, a different kind of a formula for extending the formula and i am definitely of the view 2020 is not the end of amlan waiver and they will be there forever because of the as the time goes by every party has got its own kind of thing so now without uh, maybe taking a kind of a very glorified view actually that there will be no waivers in future the waivers should be a kind of a rationalized kind of thing. so that is where i think we have to work on it so i congratulate once again others siraj hussain ji then sweta saini ji pulkit and also jakkar ji for really giving a quite a lot of a new insight into this kind of a thing and i am very happy that nabad is uh, not only the funder and also the publisher and uh, we take pride in this kind of reports thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much sir uh, for your uh, uh, address uh, i think the more i listen to you i am very uh, i am more and more convinced that a lot of us have experience lot of experience but there are very few of us who do something with the experience uh, to get insights to get uh, uh, you know uh, deep insights sometimes which only empirical research can give you but it time consuming <laughs> yeah so i think uh, uh, and also the very many suggestions you have given uh, uh, during the course of your address are also going to be food for thought and also uh, ideas for research for our head office department uh, which i'm sure would have uh, made note of uh, some of them uh, for taking up uh, in the future uh, i also thank uh, the others uh, madam uh, saini uh, mr uh, siraj hussain and uh, dr pulkit uh, katri Sarah i think so so i'm uh, i'm sure you're the one who must have done the most amount of leg work <laughs> leg work <laughs> yeah, and i'm quite i also uh, gleaned through the report uh, i was quite happy to see the you know, references to history and uh, references to global experiences and uh, by far uh, the 60 page questionnaire which you have i'm very sure that uh, there is more data to be mined uh, information to be mined from this uh, you know this questionnaire you collected than what has come in this small report so i am very sure uh, uh, that will be very useful to our head office uh, uh, for more uh, you know getting more insights into uh, uh, into this topic uh, i also thank uh, uh, you and your organization sir for uh, bharat krishak samaj for uh, taking up the study on uh, 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 on behalf of nabad and uh, uh, and coming up with uh, such a uh, good uh, uh, good report uh, uh, i would uh, thank head office uh, for uh, you know uh, thinking of uh, this topic you know of uh, head office and the management head of the dr and management to think of uh, this topic and boldly go into this topic because this is a topic which is not uh, you know uh, a run of the mill topic uh, it's a topic which is not touched by many people uh, and when i say this i am also reminded of uh, the 2008 waiver which uh, chairman sahab had uh, referred uh, after the 2008 waiver uh, we were having uh, some uh, discussions with uh, uh, the german development uh, institutions Uh, see loan waivers are not a good word in uh, development finance <laughs> so when we were having this uh, discussions uh, we were sort of uh, uh, confronted and questioned by the german uh, you know the economists saying that this is a very bad thing for the country and uh, it's going to put the whole institutional system much behind and other things uh, then our, our then chairman he said that uh, 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 he just came out of it in a very smart manner he said that See, this loan waiver has brought back about 
two crores of farmers who went out of the institutional credit system. Yeah. So it's a very smart way of yeah, dealing yeah. with that question. Yeah, that's okay. So, uh, and that's also true. That's also true, and it's also confirmed by. Actually, every five years, all the people who are out of the credit again. Yes. They want to follow that. So, and uh, it's also, I think, uh, reinforced by uh, in your in one of your slides, you said that uh, you were surprised that the next year. Uh, the banks did give credit to them. <laughs> so that was a uh, uh, thing. And uh, I also thank all the online participants uh, who I'm sure uh, would have uh, enjoyed uh, uh, this uh, pr presentation and uh, um, uh, it was useful to them. Uh, last but not the least, I thank um, our team and head office, uh, sorry, in, uh, in the regional office of Delhi, led by Pavaji to have, you know, made some good, such good arrangements for all of us. Uh, 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 to have this book launch event in uh, in a very successful manner. Uh, I once again thank the head office. Sir, you have anything else? Yeah. 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 So I, I take the opportunity to thank the Ajay Vijayanarji and especially Dilly Auro for successfully helping us to successfully launching this book event uh, in a hybrid mode. Uh, I think without my, any hiccups. And I really thank all of you, especially Chairman Sir, for an excellent uh, keynote address, that which has really thrown many issues for future research. So thank you, sir. Thank you, all of you. Yeah, yeah. To set aside and others, actually, it's a physical mode. So we are having the physical snacks and we have digital snacks. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I think we'll log off, sir, with your permission.